All right, let's be real. Out of all the relatively common geological formations and weather events people have to deal with on a semi-regular basis, volcanoes are probably the weirdest. Like tsunamis, all right? It's just like a wave, but bigger. Earthquakes? Easy. Whatever primordial being makes up the dirt in this cosmology is itching their butt or something. Thunderstorms? Either some sky god is pissed or they're having a rocking concert. But what do you do when your friendly neighborhood mountain spontaneously farts out 5,000 tons of toxic gas and fills your birdbath with rocks? Most regions with volcanoes explain their temperamentality by ascribing some kind of destructive sentience to them. Mauna Kea's unpredictable outbursts are explained by Pele's fiery temper, while in the vicinity of Greece, volcanic activity was said to demonstrate Hephaestus at work in his forge. And in the 1100s, the Icelandic volcano Hecla was thought by the European Christians to be a straight-up portal to hell. But not every volcano myth is quite so turbulent. Some of them are actually quite sweet. So today, let's turn our eyes to the Philippines and examine the folktale behind the picturesque Mount Mayon, which you might have heard of because it recently exploded. Anyway, so our story begins, as so many do, with a beautiful princess being pursued by too many suitors. The princess in this story is named Magayon, daughter of Chief Makusog, and in classic princess fashion, she's both beautiful and single. That is, until one day while taking a bath in the river, she slips and falls in, and is promptly rescued by the stewed Panganoron, who proceeds to court and propose to her on fairly short notice. Makusog gives him his blessing, and the happy couple proceed to, well, be the kind of happy couple that only fairy tale romances can truly pull off. But unfortunately, one of Magayon's former suitors, a dude named Pagtu, Suga doesn't know how to take a hint, so he decides the most reasonable course of action to deal with Magayon's newfound romantic ineligibility is to kidnap Makusog and demand Magayon marry him instead of Panganoran in exchange for her father's freedom. Understandably, she's not down with that, so Panganoran and Pagtuga go to war over the whole mess. Now, what exactly happens next varies a little from telling to telling, but the short of it is Panganoran kills Pagtuga, but right as they're celebrating their victory, either Magayon or Panganoran are killed suddenly by one of Pagtuga's warriors, and the other promptly commits suicide. Makusog grieves and buries them together, but after the burial, their grave grows into a volcano, specifically the beautiful Mount Mayon, named after the equally beautiful Magayon. The general consensus is that Panganoran is the clouds around the summit of the mountain, while Magayon is the mountain itself, as a kind of immortalized representation of the love that could never truly fulfill in life. And that's why this picture is so freaking cool. Context! If I could save time in a bottle, the first thing Save every day till eternity passes away Just to spend them with you If I could make days last forever If words could make wishes come true I'd save every day like a treasure And then again I would spend them with you but there never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do once you 